Hello everyone, this is your host, Gemma Putty, bringing vibrant living conversations from North Idaho and across this region. I'm so excited to chat with entrepreneurs, creatives, and believers as we journey together to connect more deeply to ourselves, our earth, and our communities. For today's interview, I am talking with Brady, the owner of Brady Campbell Photography. As I was cruising Google for photographers to help kick off my legitimacy in the life coaching world, I came across Brady and his tagline, a passion for people. And I immediately was hooked because I have shared the same passion for people. So now after getting to experience his magical talents and making my awkward self feel very fabulous in front of the camera, thank you, Brady. Um, I'm thrilled that I get to chat with him a little bit more about this, his search for passion of people and his quest for being real. So welcome, Brady. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, I'm glad to be here yeah. on this Zoom meeting. <laughs> yes. Zoom. Glad to virtually be here. <laughs> so, much um, so you mentioned in your tagline, and I've talked to you a little bit about this, but passion for people um, and passion to connect with people. So what does that really mean for you? It has evolved quite a bit. So mm -hmm. when I, way back when uh, in the land of marriage, I was married for a very long time and I seemed to when I noticed that I had this skill set with the camera and it was giving me this ability to get close to people, uh, I also had this overwhelming need to be validated. So it was kind of a hand in hand deal. I wasn't, you know, what, what I didn't feel like I was getting in my marriage or what I was lacking in life, I got from clients. Mm -hmm. So I was this, it was being proved to me that, you know, um, the camera was making people happy. I was making people, you know, people were happy and they were validating me and affirming me. And so I think back then my passion to connect was uh, more selfish than it is now. Yeah. But, you know, I needed to go through all of that. Like everything that led me here uh, and all the ways that that passion has evolved, you know, I, I needed to go through it. So passion that. for people and to connect uh, was more of a validating deal back then. And now I've refined it and uh, I feel like now I'm able to give back yeah. you know, <laughs> to yeah. all the people that I genuinely took from, you know, it was awesome. It was, I mean, it was, a, it was mutually beneficial. So. Well, and I think too, though, like in this human experience, like Brene Brown always says it so well that we're meant for connection and community. And so whether you feel like you're giving more at one point or they're giving more. Like, I think just that connection with people in general, the connection, the one-on-one, -on -one, and you get to do it face-to-face. -face. You're not doing it via Zoom, which is a whole nother level of meaningfulness, right? Um, I'm curious, because I love your story about being in photography, then being in finance. And will you give us just a little synopsis of like, you started in photography, you circled kind of around, and then you came back to photography. Will you tell us that story just kind of high level yeah I mean I got into <laughs> photography by a mishap you know I was just trying to be close to my girlfriend when I was 18 years old and so I worked at this camera shop close to her and that was really all it took I mean my boss gave me a camera put it in my hand and said go out and take some photos with this camera and show what it can do so we can sell it yeah. so took that camera out for one week and never put down a camera again I mean it just I was in love so I went from that uh, to being offered a job at this pro camera shop downtown, worked there for like a year. And then some studio owner just scooped me out of there. He liked my personality, said he could teach me photography. And so I went and worked for him for, you know, four to four or five years and learned every, the ins and outs of the technical side of photography, which was really, really great. I also was kind of building a business there too. I mean, I was making friends and, you know, these clients weren't just clients to me, even though they were like his, it was his business. I kind of saw myself taking over his business at some point. And uh, then it came to a point where I kind of just, you know, made as much as I was going to make there. And so I had to move out on my own. And when I moved out on my own, just out of pure survival, I did everything that I saw him do. And I did it exactly the way I saw him do it. Cause I, you know, that I did programmed. This is how you run a photography business. And I did that for a year and a half. And quite frankly, I hated it. I, I hated doing, um, you know, high volume, medium, mediocre quality. And I'm not saying that's what he was doing, but that's kind of how I felt what I was doing. I, I bought gear that I could afford when I opened up the business. I mean, I think I opened that whole business on 5,000 bucks. 
Wow. On a credit card. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> it was, it was a, a very lean business, yeah. um, but it took right off and it, it made really good money. And, um, you know, if, if money was my motivation, I would still be doing that. But yeah. after that year and a half, I just, uh, I had an opportunity to go down to San Diego and try financial planning. So, uh, <laughs> the guy that hired me ended up saying, you know, you're young enough to bounce back if this doesn't work, but you would be a fool not to take me up on this chance. So I sold everything and moved to my wife and three kids down to San Diego. And <clears throat> maybe five days into it, I knew that I hated it. You know, I was like, yep, <laughs> I hate, I hate this like legitimately. <laughs> Yeah. But in all fairness, I gave it a, a real shot and I wanted to give it a year just to, you know, see if I liked it better, if I could modify the way that this guy was running his financial practice, because right. the way he was running it would, was, he was a very different personality. So I would have ran mine very differently. So doing it his way, I would have been miserable forever. But right. anyway, so I gave it a shot. I gave it a shot and I had a lot of great uh, meetings and a uh, year of cold calling. And I learned a lot of tools that I can use throughout the rest of my life. But, you know, there was a day 10 months later that I kind of just felt this release, like, okay, you tried it. Now you can go. Yeah. So I was like, I was gone. You know, I literally got on the internet, bought another camera, bought a computer, <laughs> you know, probably as cheap as they come. And I started shooting down in San Diego and just immediately felt like I was doing what I was supposed to be doing. So no, I love this story so much though, because I think so many people, I mean, you're so lucky to have found like something you're so passionate about at such a young age, but I think we all go through those aspects of life, whether it's career or whatever, where you're like, I've been doing this for so long. Should I try something else? Like you kind of feel pulled by external factors or even your own mindset. Right. And then you're like, okay, let me go try it. And then coming back to what am I doing? <laughs> get back on track, get back to what like really brings you joy. And I'm sure when you came back to it, it probably solidified like photography in a whole new way for you. Is that right? It was completely different, completely different. So I definitely wanted to protect the way that I felt day one, going back to it. I, I knew I wanted to protect that feeling forever. You know, I didn't want to go back to feeling like I was a slave to anything or like I had to do it, you know? So uh, I told I told my wife at the time, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to be a starving artist. I'm not going to take every job. I'm going to do this the way that I want to do it. And don't know if that'll work out, but it's the only way that I can pick up this camera and do this again. Yeah. So I did. So when I opened up, I made maybe half as much as the first, first year that I had, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But I was like, okay, you know, this is a little bit of a financial struggle, but I'm happy. And mm -hmm. then year two, it increased. I was like, yeah, I'm still happy. And then I remember eight years into it again, uh, I'm like, okay, I like this as much as I did day one. And I'm making far more money. It's not a lot, trust me, but it's, you know, far more than it was. Yeah. That little number turned into a little bigger number. Right. Oh, <laughs> and, sure. uh, but I remember thinking, it, you know, I was glad that I went this approach and protected my passion for it instead of just making a career out of it, which essentially it became a career. Right. Through my passion. So I'm not saying that, that works out that way for everybody, but for me, yeah. it's my foundation was way stronger doing it this way. Yeah. And <clears throat> if something, if I'm, if I would shoot too many things that weren't going to like fill my soul or fill up my energy cup or whatever, then I, I wouldn't end up doing it the next year. So I kind of just make sure I always keep a health, healthy balance of doing things for me and doing things for them, but enough for me to where I still want to do it next year. Yeah. yeah. I think I find it so inspiring because I think with a lot of things in life, like the human journey again, is younger in life, we're doing things because we're told we should or because we're following other people, which I think is part of us getting on our journey and figuring out who we are and what makes us tick and what we want from life. But then when we circle back, we're like, we're both midlife, right? You circle back and you're like, I get to choose it for me. Like I'm choosing this stuff for me one way or another, right? Some stuff we get rid of other things. You're like, no, I'm choosing this. And then to be able to make it into a business with boundaries and you have pieces that you love and pieces that you're like, I don't love it, but it makes some money. Like <laughs> it's just it's so reflective of this like self-discovery, like human journey. And I, I just love it. It is awesome. <laughs> so you, you kind of, you're on the same path. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying to be. <laughs> I and think is, I, conversations that just light me up. 
I mean, we were talking before this, right? Like I'm surrounded by in another world of like corporate America, but having these conversations through the podcast and being able to life coach where I'm like, this is what makes me tick. And this is what makes me work a few hours extra a day, because I know really this is the direction that my heart wants to go. So. You're and I feel like it replenishes. I mean, right. You go out and take time doing this and it actually is probably going to become work for you, but it, re it replenishes you when you are just open and vulnerable and you have a, like a real legit, true human connection with somebody you get filled up, even if you are expending all this energy. I mean, I, I feel tired from talking to people. You know, if I do it all day, I'm, I'm exhausted at the end of the day. Right. But if there was any moments in there that I could slip in some like, real conversations like this. And I mean, real to where we're both being real, right? That energy exchange is a, is a replenisher. It does not, I don't think it depletes even the introverts. No, I completely but agree. Who knows? Introverts get Actually, depleted very easily. <clears throat> I'm going to take this down a complete rabbit hole, but I'm reading a book right now and it's talking about the vagus nerve, which basically connects our brain to our gut and our heart um, is so we've got th the three brains that can be stimulated and it basically proves that we're not just living from our head. Like our gut has a whole thing connected to our immunity and our heart and connection and love. So once the vagus nerve gets stimulated through real connection, and it said, mm -hmm. even with people like at an airport, if you're like, you just have that moment of like looking in and you, you're like, smile which I love doing. I love smiling with random strangers and you, I can feel it. I'm like, it feels awesome. And you're strengthening that vagus nerve, which then ultimately helps your health overall, like mind, body, soul. And I just read that the other day and I'm like, yes, I feel it. Like the connection that you have with people when it's meaningful, even for a moment, you can feel it like strengthen. Where was the third brain? You said in your gut, in your head and where else? Your heart. Like this nerve, your, oh, in your heart. So yeah. Okay, because, you know, I've always thought it was funny when people say they love people from their heart. And I'm like, no, I mean, that's really just pumping blood. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you're, you're really loving them from your, you know, your head. But now we can say we love them all the way down to our guts. Like, that's Yeah, cool. well, and I, like I think that. the basis for it was those three places have so many neuroreceptors. So they yeah. really are like talking to each other and spreading the, the uh, messages across your body from very different like your mind is obviously associated to your brain and, but your heart is more that compassion and the people piece. And then your gut is, I mean, for the most part, your immunity lives in your gut. So anyway, I that's was, cool. That's a good piece. <laughs> I like that. I've been looking to share some with that. So here you go. <laughs> I have an overstimulated vagus nerve. <laughs> Helps your health. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully. I'm interested because you as a photographer get to see people and hold space for people in a way that I honestly, the more I think about it is very much like coaching, like in letting people see themselves in a way that they probably haven't seen themselves before. So I'm curious from behind the camera, how you've observed people and how you work with them to just make them feel comfortable. Cause I had so much anxiety coming in to see you like, I am the worst in front of a camera and it was, you just made it so comfortable. And I'm just curious your experience behind the camera and just observing humanity. <laughs> big question. That is a big question. <laughs> I mean, cause I'm, I'm, I have several conversations with myself while I'm dealing with somebody. I'm having one conversation verbally. I'm having mm -hmm. another conversation where I'm observing their body language. Mm -hmm. And I have another conversation where I'm observing mine and how I'm, portraying myself. Yeah. So I'm having all of these ha things happen at once. And you could even argue to say that I'm not really there, you know, because I'm really, I'm really working on something greater than the conversation I'm verbally having with that person. But I watch, I watch them. I can see, you know, somebody's insecurities come out very, very quickly. So I, I obviously have to watch for those. And I try not to address those too much. I try to like blanket it. Like I, I, I know them, I see them. I, I, feel them, you know, their insecurities, but I'm going to work around those silently. I'm not going to bring them up. We're not going to address them, but I, but I know they're there. Yeah. So, uh, I do a lot of observing that way. And I would say that most people that come in say they're not photogenic and they're very nervous about it. So it, 
that's something I hear 99% of the shoots that I have. So it's no surprise to me you know, that everybody's nervous to do it. Yeah. I also need to get in there and have somebody, I need to pay somebody to photograph me because I have not been vulnerable on that side. Yeah. And I feel like there's some sort of disservice that I'm, you know, I'm telling people to do this thing that I won't do. But and I don't, there's something about you though, that like somehow you're connecting with people, not somehow, I mean, that you're obviously open and talkative and you've, you get to the heart of what makes people tick that. So you're right. I'm I, not going deep enough with this. Am I? No, I am, I am to, to, to get more inside of this. I am curious about people. I am very curious. So when I show up to any relationship, including yours and mine, I'm curious. So yeah. when you go out into the world and connect with people in a curious manner, you have, I mean, it's almost like superpowers, but you're not doing anything. You're just, you want to absorb these interactions and these people and you want to learn about humanity. And you want, I want to learn about people's like specific stories, like their individual stories, how they got to where they got and why when we took completely separate paths through life, how we are so the same. Yeah. Like how, that's one thing I've observed about people. And I feel like I have good, I have a good amount of stats now with, you know, I've been shooting for over 20 years, thousands of people right. in, you know, different cultures and uh, some different languages and different upbringings and different financial statuses and different hardships and all these things. And I've realized that we're all the same. And that, that is a too blanketed of a statement for somebody that's all been stuck in North Idaho forever, you know, to say, <laughs> but we all, we all bleed the same. We all have like the same human weaknesses and, you know, we're, we're all susceptible to insecurities and yeah. worries and fears and, yeah. and all these things. So we should be able to enter into every single interaction with more compassion. We, I yeah. mean, empathy, we should, because they're no different. I mean, essentially. Right, right. No, I, love I have observed that people are looking for reasons to be angry. And so that's disheartening a little bit. They're looking, I feel like they're looking for a dumping ground because they have all of this stuff they haven't worked through, they haven't processed, they don't know how to get the stuff that's in here out. Yes. And so uh, anger is something I'm very familiar with. <laughs> I've been angry my whole life, you know, so I, I understand what anger is like the, uh, the reason for it. it, it just covers things up. It, uh, it kind of dumps things like temporarily onto other people. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't stay like that. It's not sustaining, but it feels good in the moment to like, just get angry and dump, you know, cause I got all this stuff I don't know how to deal with. Right. So I'm going to yell at you and I need you to deal with it. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> many nuggets. Yes. Cause the human experience, um, oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. But thinking about where was my brain going? Oh, just people wanting to feel comfortable and connected. And I still haven't gotten it. I'm trying to get myself back on track. <laughs> <laughs> Derailed. <laughs> yes. No, but. Um, were you going on the track of the anger and the dumping or that we're all the same or were you? spinning off some the anger direction. was good the, uh, the self-reflection I think that you and I have both been on obviously for a long time is it's not anything that's part of our culture to we're never really taught that anger is a projection onto other people anger is kind of a numbing it's like a secondary emotion yeah it's, it's really a cover-up it, it, it's, it's like it's valid it's right, like no, a, totally it's a signal valid. that says something's wrong something is wrong. Right. And I think it's, that's, I think that's where with any emotion, you feel it in yourself, but understanding that you're the one that's in control of that and mm -hmm. tapping to, um, what's going on inside of me. So you're not projecting it onto everybody and the world around you. Right. Um, and I think that, this is where I was going, is that yes. the race, <laughs> I knew I'd come back to it. But in general, right now, we're so polarized. Like they want to put people on one end of the spectrum or the other end of the spectrum. But really, I mean, on that same vein of like being willing to do the self work and realizing that we are a human race. And you might, you don't have to think the same things and believe the same things as other people. But at the core of who we are, like, we want to be loved. We want to be valued. We want to feel like we're contributing 
And that piece right now feels lost. And I think part of it is because it's not, these aren't conversations that we ever have. Like I think they should be happening. I don't know where they'd be happening, school? I don't know, <laughs> but somewhere a lot younger where really those emotions that you're feeling is normal. Like you can feel anger and frustration. Just don't lash out at the world. Like you need to do some inner work and because someone thinks differently than you doesn't mean they're evil. Like they have a different experience, a different background, different parents, different everything that that curiosity piece and going back to like having these conversations, what makes people tick? Why have they gotten to where they are? I'm just curious about that because of course it's logical in their lived experience and our lived experience is different to get us to a different conclusion. So you just, I, I, do we have, I mean, tell me if we already have this, but do we have any like self-discovery classes? Like I'm thinking, I was just picturing while you were talking that we have an instructor all growing up, elementary school, junior high, high school, that's just telling every single person in that room the same information. Right. You know, they're just right. talking at them. Right. But I wonder if there could be any courses where it's like, we're going to learn about you. You're going to learn, learn about you. Mm -hmm. And when you leave school, you're going to have a sense of purpose. Yeah. That was one thing I was lacking in my life. I didn't know what my purpose was. And when you are purposeless, yeah. and that doesn't mean a direction as far as a career. It could for somebody. Right. My purpose is connection and, and uh, self-acceptance. Yeah. That's my purpose right now. So right. Um, I feel like that's a direction enough for me to where I feel very, very, like I walk into every room a little lighter now. I feel yeah. like when you have that direction, and I think all these kids are lacking this, you yeah. know, they get out of school and they're like, okay, so what job do I get into? It's like, well, I don't know. Who are you? And they're like, well, I don't know yet. You know, yeah. I, it would be nice if we had conditioned people from a very young age to ask these questions, just to right. ask questions about themselves. Exactly. Why am I angry? Why? Right. No, why am I just in survival mode? Why, why am I not thriving? Why am I not? Why am I angry all the time? Why am I crying? Why? I don't know. I thought about I this these questions because like, I, sorry, I was just going to say with like midlife crisis, like I think like midlife crisis is a thing, right? The, but I'm like, I think it's up until that point where following other people, like you will go to school and you will learn about X, Y, and Z from a person with a very specific worldview and then you will go to college or something and get a job and then have kids and 2.5 or 2.5 kids you know and and then in midlife we're like we have been on someone else's like path we've been on our culture's path for so long and then we're like this isn't working like who am i what do i want what's my purpose and it's in midlife where it like all comes crashing down we're like no more i know there has to be something bigger than this and I guess for me, that would mean I had a midlife crisis much earlier, but, <laughs> um, but just exactly what you're saying that like self-discovery journey and who are you? Like, what are your talents? It's what are your strengths? What makes you tick? It's not a conversation that I wasn't ever taught or didn't have a class around it either. You know, I think luckily I somehow was wired this way to be curious. And that's how I feel too. I was kind of just wired this way too. But yeah. I was just, I'm, I'm very visual. So even as we were talking, I was imagining that picture, you know, of a, just all of us on a conveyor belt. Yeah. And then there's these, there's these people that are ultimately free. That is freedom. And they're off the conveyor belt, just like holding up their hands saying like, hey, get off, come with me, you know, get <laughs> off of there, you know, and hopefully you have somebody in your life that pulls you off that conveyor belt right. and shows you what it could be to be ultimately free. It doesn't mean you're not still going to go after that same career but right. you're not just following. You're not just, you know, yeah. being led down a path of the societal norm, which I honestly is like a dirty word to me, but yeah, I'm a free spirit. Don't tell me what to do or where to go. <laughs> I, I might go there, but don't tell me to. Yeah. Well, and I think I told you too, that my shift was, it wasn't that I didn't like what I was doing. Like I, you know, after going to college and blah, blah, blah. And even right now, but the shift was from lack to abundance. Like I was lack, I felt like I was living from lack and like, oh, this is a burden and oh, this is too much and I'm not good enough and doing things to be validated by other people, by my workplace, um, to like fit norms, I guess, looking back to it. And now it's from a place of like abundance of like, this is who I am. 
this is what I have to offer the world. This is how I want to show up in a positive, like giving way. And when I need to like set boundaries to look after myself and honor myself, I'm going to do it because I know that my life is not supposed to be on autopilot and drained and exhausted and just ugh, on the conveyor belt. Like you said, I don't want to be on but the you're back to You're back to the midlife crisis thing. Once you realize you're like, I, okay, so I've expended this amount, amount of time, like struggling and worrying and trying to live normal and trying to compare myself and you know you're, you're living from a lack of and then you're like i have a short amount of time left so i need i mean there is a shift there's a shift right. and some people have it very early on right. i have i have photographed seniors for 20 years like graduation graduating seniors right. and some of these 17 year olds i mean they come in i'm like you know who you are like that's incredible yeah you know who you are you know what you want out of life and you're 17 Right. I didn't know which way was up. I had no idea. <laughs> it's, it's pretty remarkable. They're going to, yeah. you know, I, I always, I just think they're going to have a very full life, you know? Yeah, no, for sure. Well, and I think even just like raising Beckett, raising kids, right? I'm like, Beckett's going to, I'm going to, I'm already looking at his human design, like looking at, he's a manifester and I'm like, no, understanding who my child is so that I can support and guide that rather than direct it onto the conveyor belt. Yeah. And I don't think even that conversation happens in, I mean, I don't know. At this point in life, I'm like, I don't want all the external content. I feel pretty good about how I'm living life and I'm just going to keep doing until it proves itself otherwise. But as a and parent, things change. Yeah, totally. Curious people love change though. You know, it's like yeah. what, which, which direction is this going to go later? Yeah. Who knows? No, for but sure. living in your purpose is your purpose can change you know, a thousand times. Yeah. I think it can just yeah. like evolve. Totally, like we do as human beings, based yeah. on the experiences that we're having. Yeah. Oh, I do love when you know partnerships say, you know, we grew apart. Like, I mean, I I kind of feel like we all grow in different directions. You can right. still be with those people. I believe you could. Right. I mean, this is coming from a very single person, but uh, <laughs> I think that it's possible to grow in different directions, but still together. You know, still be together as long as you allow each other that space. Right? Yeah. 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 No, it takes intentionality for sure. Because it, yeah, it's, you're still two separate humans. And I, yeah, it takes intentionality to grow in a way that- You can speak important. to this better than I can. <laughs> Mark and I are working on it right now. Or like Wednesday nights. This is our night. Because otherwise we run in opposite directions, which I is why we thrive as a couple, that we both have passions. But also having that time of like, okay, but when are we planning our life and talking? And so- it, at this point too, I'm like, does everything have to be so planned? Yes, it does. Okay, fine. Get it on the calendar. Let's do this. <laughs> do you believe that one person such as Mark could satisfy all of the different facets of you? No. Yeah. I don't. I think that's also why we thrive is I'm like, you need friends. I need friends. Yeah, I need yeah. girlfriends. I need, and I think understanding that, that all of my needs cannot be fulfilled by him and I don't want them to be fulfilled by him is it broadens my community of support and love and you know so I will this is a segue but I I believe that you know we're just and just generalizing in heterosexual relationships right. from my own experience that that men oftentimes you know when they get into a relationship and they maybe own a business or they work a lot or whatever they work, they go home, they work, they go home. And those, those guys, I can tell you from my last seven years of being, you know, solo mm -hmm. is that I kind of lose their attention once they get into a relationship. And I really think men need men, you know, as far as in this category right. to bounce their frustrations off of each other, empathize with each other, you know, um, compete with each other, you know, to kind of like breed about that excellence to like work harder, to be better at something, encourage each other in our roles, whatever those roles are. Right. And it's frustrating to me that men are so unavailable to other men when right. they are in relationship. Trust right. me, if I, you know, my single guys are ready to go at a moment's notice to wherever, <laughs> whenever, however, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm still, I'm, I'm still, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to make that a mission for myself too, to, to get men together. And I think too, though, I mean, we've talked about it before, not just together. And I mean, we all like a beer and to, you know, hang out, but having real conversations like that's right. Saying, that's right. Like, depth. 
Yeah. Depth. Like the depth of not. I get depleted by small talk. It wears me out. It does yeah. because I don't care. <laughs> I, I do not care. The weather today. <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, we can touch on it for a half a second. It is snowing sloppy right now and it's beautiful, but now we can move on. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. If no. all we have to talk about is the weather, we, we, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I couldn't even finish that sentence. If but I think though, even in the life coaching world, like I've listened to some and it's very female focused right now. There's not, I mean, and obviously I'm not looking for male life coaches, but just in what I've learned. I've been coaching you since I met you. <laughs> you have, you totally have. You said I'm kind of like a life coach with my camera. <laughs> yes. But coaches for men, right? Oh, and yeah. Men, yeah, yeah. And more even men being open to wanting to have that. Like, let's tap into that anger. What is underneath that anger? How what's going on there? And just being willing to have those emotions and understand that those are emotions. They're not who you are. You just need to flush through whatever's causing them and how you want to feel and all of the things. Um, Which yeah. leads me to another word is ownership. ownership. We should definitely be, tr we should definitely be like spreading the mission of owner of mission uh, the idea of ownership, like when you do feel that anger, when you do feel that hurt, you kind of like, you own it as yourself. Like what did, how did I lead myself to this place? You yeah. know, what yeah. part did I take in getting myself here yeah. instead of always looking for external reasons as to why you are feeling that, right? you know, like, no. Oh, I'm, I'm angry because oh, it must've been something that happened. That road rage deal, you know, the guy cut me off. That must be why I'm feeling so angry yeah. instead of saying like, man, I'm really angry. I wonder what, I wonder what in my past or what, what's led me, what happened, what's led me to, you know, to take on this, no. just ownership, ownership in general. If you know, it's introspection, it's just like anytime a problem comes up in a relationship, if each person first looked inward and said, man, how did I get here? Right. Uh, why don't, you know, exactly. We have a, a lot more peace, a lot more peace in our relationships and our connections. Well, even in my time life coaching like that the premise there is like believing that you are the expert of your own life and so many clients come and they want me to give them answers and I'm like no no <laughs> own but like we tap in with powerful questions to say own this like what has happened how do you feel how do you want to feel where are you going? Where do you want to go? And how can you take action towards that? I can't take action. I can't tell anyone anything that doesn't, because it would, it's from my perspective, right? It has to resonate with the client and watching them like suddenly start to sink in and like, oh, this is appeal to me. And I know I've done this successfully before and maybe that will work. It's such a beautiful thing to watch people realize that you don't have to outsource your power to other people. You get to own your power, ownership, and drive your own ship, design your own life. You know, love it. I love it so the much. The best coaches make it your idea. I mean, the best therapists make it your idea. <laughs> well, and I think when- It's true. Yeah. But how do you, how, it's, I feel like people have a hard time valuing that. So well, I'm paying you to have me do all the work. <laughs> Can't you just take my anger away? I'm, you know, if I give you a thousand dollars, will you please just take my anger? Well, with therapy, that's a whole nother thing, right? Like that's healing. With life coaching, it's you designing your life so that in three months you don't need me because you've figured out your own power and that you don't need me. Like I can hold you accountable for three months and help you tap into how you want to feel. But in three months, you don't meet me because you figured out, I've helped you figure out that you really are the expert of your own life and you asking other people to give you the answers is outsourcing your power. And what else do we have if we don't have our own power? You know, boom. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we kind of got a little bit, I mean, honestly, this was an awesome, I knew this would happen. Like I'm going to give some questions, but really this is the power in these conversations is that they're conversations. Um, but on I wanted to tap into the, your ahas along your self-discovery journey, especially with in line with your business too. So we talked a little bit about dear world, but just ahas that you've had, um, that have either changed your direction or shaped how you feel about photography and people and really life in general. Big question again, you know, 
I mean, I, I guess we'll just go back to what we accidentally talked about anyway, but, um, you know, authenticity, I, I joined this, I, 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 I'm sorry. I joined this men's group a couple of years ago and it just, it, so it was all, it was all about becoming an integrated man, an integrated meaning self-acceptance. I accept all my good parts, my bad parts, my quirky parts, my messy parts, my good parts. You know, I accept all, I accept all of me as I am today. Right. And so that, that was probably the biggest pivotal moment in my life was just realizing that I was good enough today as is. It doesn't mean that everyone's going to like me because right. we know that's not the case. Right. Not everybody's going to like me, but, <clears throat> but do I like me, you know, and all this self-love talk and uh, self-care and you know, you have to love yourself before you can love anybody else properly. You know, all this stuff was going around and I was just like scoffing at it. It's like, gross, 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 gross. You know, <laughs> yes. you're all selfish people. But <laughs> the aha moment was that I, the selfish people are my favorite nowadays. They're my favorite because I can feel their energy. They are operating from a full cup and they have an abundance and they can share it. Mm -hmm. But they do have healthy boundaries because they care about themselves. Yeah. So they will share it. And it is contingent upon, you know, what you do with what they share with you. Yeah. And so I have become a very selfish person and unapologetically. And now I am attracting a new crowd of people yeah. that are also very selfish, but we, I'm, we're having deeper, more meaningful conversations and relationships and friendships through our selfishness than mm -hmm. I ever did before thinking that I had to please everybody that I came across. So well, selfish, selfish. I've used that word forever and someone like call me out on it. I'm like, but selfish, you're, it sounds like a negative word, but really you're mm -hmm. just flipping the definition on its head. Selfish Correct. means looking after yourself first so you can show up as the best version of yourself in the world, right? Like it's not a negative thing. Really, it's, it's just- more, It's more self-care related. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. I mean, not everything's mine, 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 mine. That's a different kind of selfish than I, but I like using the word because it's a, uh, it is a, it, it perks people's ears up. Mm -hmm. It's like selfish. How dare you? <laughs> like, yeah. Well, I, it can be a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an aha moment. Um, gosh, I, I, I got old because uh, I mean, the aha moment that I don't have very much time left on this earth, <laughs> you know, that yeah. I want to treat my relationships and connections very much more seriously. Now that's why small talk depletes me because yeah. I feel like, um, on the wheel of how I'm going to share my time, energy, money, you know, everything, uh, small talk is, is like, you know, a little tiny sliver. Yeah. So I'm like, well, you know, after five seconds, I'm like, well, that's all the time we have for today, you know, for small talk. <laughs> and yeah. then I move on to my, my deeper meaning, you know, because I, I, you have to think about on your deathbed, what regrets will you have? Right. Right then, what do I wish I would have had more of? Right. What do you think it is? I, time, for, and, time and people. Yeah. Time right. and people. Right. Nothing else. So I admire the people that make a lot of money and have become wealthy and financially independent to where they can operate from a place of comfort and abundance. And, they, and a lot of those people I know, they give back in great amounts, you know, most of those people I know had to give up and sacrifice so much time and energy to get to that place. Some mm -hmm. of them had to sacrifice their families. Mm -hmm. So I am now like balanced is a word that has been thrown around our whole lives. And I just, it's resonating more with me nowadays. Mm -hmm. We obviously have to make the tool called money. We have to use it. You know, it's a necessary evil. Right. So in balance, how much time and energy are we going to give to making that money and what time and energy are we going to use in sharing it, spending it, you know, utilizing it or whatever, how are we going to, so I guess I just feel like I'm starting to live life as if it's going to end, you know, soon. Yeah. And it may not, I may live another 50 years. Right. It may not end soon for me, but I'm taking it more seriously now, no, totally. even, even down to my job and the way I make money. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. No, for sure. One, I think, yeah, we could all die tomorrow, right now. The all of us. Day, right? No, like legitimately. <laughs> and, it, yeah. and it sounds like a negative thing, but honestly, I always think about, I'm thinking about like on my deathbed, what am I going to be so thankful that I did and created? Like, do I want to say that I worked more and, or do I want to say that 
I connected with people exactly what you're saying and like lived I took the life. negative spin that's just like <laughs> you're taking the you, positive of course spin. You I like did. it just kidding <laughs> no but I'm I just think- thinking about what I'm thankful for you're thinking about regrets <laughs> But you get it, right? It's the same. Yeah, like, I get it. You get, get to it. the same place where it's like, yeah, I mean, and I see it's like balance in the life chapter that you're in, right? Right now, I have a two year old. So, me like full running full steam ahead at like business creation is something that I want to do, but I want to raise my two year old. So he's not 18. And I'm like, oh, well, mom at least created a business. Like, that's not it. And I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, but now I'm forced because I didn't spend my Wednesday nights with my husband or whatever, you know? So it's like balance in each life chapter. Later on in life, I probably, you know, I'll have more free time. Right now, I'm in mom mode. It Just enjoying it as life chapters. Like, again, things will change. You might not have the time for it now, but you might in the next chapter, you know, if you design your chapters, right? <laughs> And maybe you'll never get to that place that you envision. Maybe you'll go some other direction. You know, exactly. you just stay curious, stay open. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Obviously, you don't want to just be floating around in limbo. Limbo is a messy place for me. I don't do well in limbo. Yeah. That's why I say I have to have a direction, a yeah. purpose. It doesn't have to be a big purpose. It just has to be a purpose. No, totally, right? It keeps you fo- focused and out of mm-hmm. getting out of bed every morning. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. know, I was thinking when you're like, I'm running a business and I'm late on my deadlines every single year, this time of year for retouching services, getting prints to people. Um, and so I, I used to have this fear that if they saw on my social media or something that I did something fun and they would be thinking, Oh, why isn't he getting my photos to me? What the heck is he doing on a mountain? You know what this guy is, uh, anyway, so that used to bother me a lot. But really, I'm re-energizing myself so that I can keep going. I'm fueling up, you know? And so I I do apologize a lot in my life. I mean, I, it's just like I uh, run at a pace where I just, I forget some things. I apologize for that. Or I, I'm late on some things. I apologize for that. I am not going to beat myself up too much over it. But we have to have these times where we just go and, you know, you go with the dog and your son and just go walk and get away from whatever life is demanding of you right that moment, sometimes you need to drop it midstream. Right. Like you are in the midst of it and you've got to drop it right then and go replenish. Totally. no. And my body will tell me, my body tells me, <clears throat> you can sit at this computer for another hour. You're not going to accomplish anything. Or you can go <laughs> replenish yourself and then you'll have another four hours after that, you know? And I think our world is so go, 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 overwork, overachieve, blah, blah. And I think I experienced that with the podcast. Like over the summer, I was like, I am doing too much. And I was doing life coach training and I was, this was becoming a burden. And I was like, no, once this, once my passion starts feeling like a burden, I'm taking a break. So I took a couple of months off over the summer. And then I was super excited to start again in the fall and start having these conversations. And like, do I need to show up every week on the podcast because X, Y, or Z person somehow miraculously has the time? I don't. I want to like, this is my boundaries. This is, I still believe in it, but this is how it looks for me in this chapter of my life. And it's been so liberating, right? It's so liberating to be like, I'm creating the boundaries here. I don't want it to negatively affect other people, but this is what I have to do to show up first for me so that I can and keep showing up for everyone else. That is freedom. Yes. You know what freedom is? That is freedom. Ooh, yes. Freedom totally. is for me is more of an internal, you know, it's, it's free of free from people's expectations, free from their baggage, free right. from their traumas, free from anything they're projecting onto you. Totally. Free from free from your own self. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you beat yourself up, I was going to say defamation, but that's not <laughs> what I was looking for. Like de- deprecation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Self deprecation. Anyway, you know, yeah. freedom. Freedom is when you navigate with grace and you allow things to not go a certain way and you're okay with that and you have boundaries and you don't allow everything to come in right yeah it's almost like you want to apologize and say i'm sorry your schedule is too crazy we couldn't line it up but i'm i'm free i'm not going to take this on i'm so sorry you know you're you're free yeah i'm free (laughs) i I think that like goes back to you have to know yourself like if you don't know that 
you know what? I get burnt out after this. It, you, it's very easy to be like, oh, I should be this way. I should be a harder worker. I'm slacking right now. I'm like, you're tired. Honor what your body needs. Go take a nap. That'll take care of itself later or it won't either way, you know, but like knowing and respecting and honoring your own needs. Yeah. Is- selfish. You're so selfish. <laughs> I thrive on selfish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to need a nap after this. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Brady, this has been such a good conversation. I could talk to you forever, but um, I think at this point, is there anything else that you want to add or anything else you want to talk about before we kind of wrap it up for today? I would probably just get us into another 30 minutes. <laughs> I do have other subjects that I see. I had planned to talk about a few other things that are off the list now. So it's good. Yeah. We'll just have to have another one. We will. Yes. Part yeah. two. I love yeah, it. exactly. Perfect. Um, well, I mean, bringing it back to your business and I would definitely had such a great experience and my photographs are awesome. Um, how do people find you, Brady? I mean, the best way, it sounds ridiculous, is through my website. Okay. The only reason for that is through the website, those inquiries get dumped into my email and the emails are taken care of, you know, not always right away, but they are, they're they're not overlooked. If, if it's text or phone call, those things can get buried through personal stuff too. So, uh, www.bradycampbellphotography.com. And that is the best way. And your social is on there too. I mean, I think if anyone wants yeah. to look at your photographs, yeah, Instagram, Instagram is the Brady Campbell. Um, Facebook is probably Brady Campbell as well. So yeah, it's, I'm, I'm easy to find. You can just Google Brady Campbell. You'll find an Irish dance school, which is not me. And, <laughs> And me. So, yeah. I would love to see you at an Irish dance school. That's hilarious. (laughs) Maybe our next podcast, we'll uh, do a little jig. (laughs) Oh, funny. Well, I always like to end with the question. um, Vibrant living conversations glowing from the inside out. Um, Who are a couple of people in our community that inspire you? That is one, one question that was very difficult for me to answer. I just, I, so many people have touched me in different ways. I can't, I can't put three people on a pedestal. (laughs) Like right this very, right this very moment, like this is very impactful to me. I can't even think past your face to even think about other people that are, you know, (laughs) making a difference in my life right now uh, or inspiring me. I mean, I could, I could name names, but then I would leave other people out and it's just not, I, I, I have, yeah. The people that have inspired me the most in my community they they have very little time, a lot of money, and they always make time and they always are generous. And so I have been seeing these generous people throughout my years of work and some of them are my clients and those people inspire me all the time. And if, if I wanna like be like somebody, I just wanna be generous like that. Those people are so cool and they still take care of themselves. And they're also manifestors as well, but which <laughs> that's another topic for another day. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been so fun. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate you joining me. Yeah. Thanks for having me. I love this. Yeah.